everybody. Joy here. It is June 9, 2023. I keep saying 2022. I hope people can figure out it's 2023. <laughs> so it's me and my tree this morning <laughs> because this is about the only thing left in this room uh, that I can actually move. Everything I can lift or move is out of here. So the painters are coming Monday and I asked them to start up here because I want this room back as soon as I can get it back and then they can go spend the rest of their life in the garage if they want to. <laughs> so I know I've been missing for a while. I've been busy. I'm always busy. Aren't y'all always busy doing something? So Wednesday I spent all day with my friend Terry. She finally got a day to come over here and spend with me so it was wonderful. She made an entire quilt almost and I made a blouse. Oh, you want to see my blouse? I should show you my blouse. I think I already hung it up downstairs in my closet though. <laughs> I'll go put it on in a minute and you can see my blouse. And so the month of June, Seasons in Blue, Block of the Month by Edita Sitar came out yesterday or the day before. Came out Wednesday. And I noticed it was a block from the Alaska quilt. And I thought, oh no, not the Alaska quilt. <laughs> I knew it was going to be harder than that. So it's just one block from the Alaska quilt. So yesterday was my Zoom day with Philly. And she was working on Super Bloom by Edita Sitar. She got the ninth block done out of nine blocks. Then she has to start um, sashings and borders. And so I thought, well, I might as well attempt to do that Alaska block. So here it is. You have to make five of them. So I got two done. In the morning, I finished something else. Um, I don't remember what I finished, but I finished something in the morning. And so then in the afternoon after lunch, I said, I'm going to try to do one of those Alaska blocks. So as usual, confusing directions. One of her directions you can print out. There's another one she does a video of. There's another one that's in the book. So all different ones. Well, one of the blocks showed these big pieces as being light colored. So I did mine light colored. Well, then I went back and watched the video again from the current thing that she's doing. And her big pieces are dark blue and her little pieces are light. <sighs> so I thought, fine. I'll do one each. <laughs> so I have to make three more. I want to do them today while I'm comfortable. And then there was one place I heard her say you could press the seams open. Then again, when I went back in there later to look and see what she was doing, she had pressed all the seams so they went around in a circle. So those of you who are doing this with me, tell me if you pressed yours open or you pressed them all around in a circle. <laughs> I find it hard no matter what the heck you do with these kind of triangles. <laughs> but my centers came out pretty good. Do you think my centers are pretty good? I think they are. Being you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points in the center that have to match. I think mine look pretty good. And in this case, it's going to have to pass. <laughs> so what else is going on? I have a funny story to tell you. You want to hear a funny story? <laughs> uh, let me take a break and I'll come back and tell you a funny story. Remember I told you the air conditioner was broken in here. So we found a really, really good air conditioner company recommended by our refrigerator appliance man who's been here four times and the refrigerator still isn't fixed and he has to come back again. <laughs> so anyway, he recommended this company and it turns out they're darling. They said Sebastian and Raphael and they were both just wonderful. And we were very happy with that. Did something he didn't even have to do and didn't charge us for it. And Jerry gave him some money for that and some cash. And it was really nice. So, got the air conditioner running. But my point is, does she have a point, Ralph? Um, the air conditioner's now running. <laughs> and I can hardly hear it. 
It's not loud and I can hardly hear it, but when I play these videos back to edit them, it seems like there's a train going through the room. So I apologize for the noise if there turns out to be an air conditioner roar. All right, so let me tell you my fun story. As you know, we hardly ever, 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 ever hear from our family. Um, I'll leave that right there. And <laughs> yes, we call him. Do they call back? No. Okay. So every once in a while, I hear from my number one grandson, Boo Bear. Y'all got to know Boo Bear. If you're new and you don't know Boo Bear, he is my first grandson, my first grandchild. He's about 30, 28, 30 now. And um, I took care of him for like the first three years of his life while his mom was in nursing school. And so Papa, his Papa and I, had him a whole, whole bunch until he was about three years old. And then as he was growing up, he and his other brother and his sister used to spend lots of time down here. We'd have them for two weeks if the mom and the stepdad went on vacation or if she wanted a break, we'd have them down here if they wanted to come. We, we were like a normal family in those days. It, it was really wonderful. I wish we could bring those times back. The daddy was in the life then. Now it's a, a whole different thing. But anyway, we are very, very close to him because of that, and the other two as well. But he was the first, and so I was working. I was working for our medical equipment business, and I started out working in our home office. So I would have to entertain him somehow, keep him busy somehow, so I could work and I could talk on the phone. <laughs> and uh, get my paperwork done and claims filed. I had to file claims with Medicare and Medicaid and Blue Cross and all of that. So you know what that's like. So I had a playpen for him and I would put him in his playpen. I would put him in front of the TV and I would put Winnie the Pooh on. I love Winnie the Pooh. <laughs> I don't even know if you can get him anymore, but I would put Winnie the Pooh on. And then I would sing with him, Winnie the Pooh, Winnie the Pooh, la 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 la, I don't remember the rest. And then there was this donkey named Eeyore, and I just totally, totally love that donkey. It's my birthday. Oh, love the donkey. So anyway, I loved watching Winnie the Pooh as much as he did. And so we were always talking about Pooh Bear. Let's put Pooh Bear on. And so... He got so he could walk in the walker. You know, you put in those little things and they can't walk for real, but they can walk in the walker. And so he would come around the corner where I was working in the office and he would go, boo! And he just thought he was so funny, you know. And I'd be in the kitchen making something and he'd come around the corner in his walker and go, boo! And so I started saying, you little boo bear, you need to go in there and watch boo bear. And so I just, he, the name caught. And so everybody in the family calls him Boo Bear because that's what I've called him since he was a little boy. So anyway, he's, he's like special at the top of the list, you know. So every once in a while, I guess he remembers he has a grandma who adores him. And um, he called the other night. Actually, something really sad happened in his life. His next door neighbor and very, very, very good friend had just a crazy freak accident just, I can't even imagine that it happened, but it did. He even had a helmet on, and he was on some kind of a little uh, two-wheeler. It's not a motorcycle. It's like a two-wheeler thing with a lawnmower engine, and you buy him at Tractor Supply or something. It's like a little two-wheel motorcycle thing or something. And you can't ride it in the street. It's not street legal, so they have to ride it on the sidewalks. So they were riding on some sidewalk in Austin. Sorry, that was a sneeze break. So he and his friend, his friend was 44, he and his friend and his friend's son, who was 15, were riding these things near a park where the big sidewalk, and the sidewalk is for bicycles and people to walk on, and I guess you can ride these things on it. And so on each side of this sidewalk, there's these big cement curbs, bigger than a normal curb, big curbs to keep you from going into the street and keep the street from coming into you. So it's a wide sidewalk and it's got these big curbs on both sides. Well, somehow, his friend's bike hit the curb on the left that threw him off the bike 
and into the curb on the right and it hit him in the head and he had like a half helmet on the helmet covers the top of your head and the side of your head and the back of your head but it doesn't cover your face so he hit his face so John was really 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 upset he said he cried for weeks and he would have called us sooner but he wanted to make sure he wouldn't cry <laughs> so he called to tell us about that hold on another second the nose sorry about that so I may get this a little bit wrong but it's mostly like this so his friend hit the curb with his face it broke both of his eye sockets it broke his jaw it broke his shoulders and his ribs something like that he was in really bad shape and the impact of it shook his brain so much that it caused irreversible harm to his brain so he was in the hospital i don't know how long in a coma and then finally he died so john called to tell us about that and told us um so sweet how much he loved us and appreciated us and oh i just soaked it in soaked it in pour it in fill up my love cup <laughs> and so that was precious that was just him he called us by himself. Now, he is a stay-at-home dad. He takes care of Pumpkin Pants, his little boy who's now five. And you know about Pumpkin Pants. His name is Luke. I call him Pumpkin Pants. So, as all little kids do, Luke has grown up a lot and he's learned how to talk. And we were just so surprised. Oh, my gosh, Luke can talk. <laughs> so, he, John had to go. We talked to him for about 30 minutes that night. He said, I have to go. I'll call you back tomorrow night. So he called the next night, which was a couple days ago. He called the next night, and he was with Luke. and Because he takes care of him. His wife has a business, and um, she wanted John to be a stay-at-home dad until Luke started school, okay? So Luke and his daddy are very, very close, which I think is wonderful. Okay, I'm loaded up with nose spray and dealt some cough syrup. <laughs> I'm beginning to think I'm allergic to myself, y'all. <laughs> Anyway, so his daddy calls to say he was sorry he had to go the night before and to just chat. And so he was with Luke upstairs in their home in Austin. And Luke, I heard Luke say, who are you talking to? And John said, his real name is John. John said, I'm talking to Grandma Joy. And Luke said, well, I want to talk to her. <laughs> so he, he said, well, okay, here you can talk to Grandma Joy. So he says, hi, Grandma Joy. And I said, well, hello, Luke. What are you up to? And he said, I'm cleaning up my room or something. I don't know what he said he was doing. And he said, I caught some fish. He said, I didn't cast, but I caught some fish or something like that. And I said, well, you need to come to Grandma Joy's house and go fishing with Papa and your daddy on Papa's boat. And he said, okay, choose three days. I said, choose three days. I said, well, okay, why don't you come tomorrow? And he said, okay, I will. <laughs> so he got off the phone and John starts talking to me. And a little while later, we talked for quite a while, and uh, I heard again, I want to talk to Grandma Joy again. So he, John said, okay, here's the phone, talk to Grandma Joy. And he gets on the phone and he says, get my bed ready. <laughs> Get my bed ready. You would think he was grown up and had his own car and could just drive here. It just totally cracked me up. So anyway, then his daddy got back on and we finished talking to his daddy for a long time. So that was it. It was over. We hung up. So I had no expectations whatsoever of them actually coming. But John called yesterday and said, Luke just will not leave me alone. He just insists on coming up there. So he said, I said, okay, if we come up there Friday. And um, he said, because he has something else he has to do on Thursday. And I said, John, it is Thursday. John said, oh my gosh, I'm a day behind. That's what happens when you don't have a job and you don't go to work every day. You never know what day it is. They're going to call me back and let me know if they can come next week. Now, next week, the painter's going to be here all week. And I told him that. But I said, I actually could use some muscle around here because my one-armed husband can't lift anything. <laughs> so... And their bedrooms are downstairs, so John has a bedroom here and Pumpkin Pants has a bedroom here, so no problem. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to tell you that I've been spending most of my time this last week getting this room emptied out and figuring out where to take all the things that were in the room. 
So only the big furniture is left in here, and they said they'll move it around and they'll just cover it up with drop cloths because they have to do the ceiling too. So that'll be fine. And another week gone by, we'll be past the painting adventure. <laughs> so that will be nice. All right, I'm going to stop talking for now until the coughing quits. <laughs> I'll come back after a while and show you the blouse I made, okay? I made it, let me see, the morning is Zoom day, and then I made it all day the day before with um, Terry. So, I'll be back. Ta-da! <laughs> I've taken enough drugs this morning to stop a wild charging elephant, let me tell you. <laughs> Good gravy already. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a drug addict. Boy, is this ever dirty. I just put my contacts in downstairs. <laughs> this thing looks like it has fuzz growing on it. It's going outside for a good bath. Okay, so here it is. This is the blouse that I cut out many moons ago when we got our first RV because I had a sewing machine and I took it in the RV and I was gonna make this blouse. So it was already cut out. So when Terry came over the other day, she brought a quilt, to, she had the blocks made. She had to sew all the blocks together and do borders and make a baby quilt. And uh, so I thought, what can I do? What can I do? And when I was cleaning this room out, I found this somewhere in this room. So I thought, oh, I'll just finish sewing this together. So I had to find seven matching buttons. Why seven? Because if you remember in some of my training that I, you know, everything I've learned, I've learned from somebody else. But I learned that you have to put the first button here in the middle of your bust. Your, your protrusions. <laughs> I had a lot of drugs, y'all. <laughs> so I always put my first button there. Well, then if you have a low V, you don't have very much room between that button and this button. So I just went ahead and made all the rest of that space and ended up with seven because I heard someplace, sometime, somebody told me it's a horrible crime to put an even number of buttons on your blouse. They're supposed to be an odd number. <laughs> Who makes these things up? I don't know. But I really probably should have just put six. And the next problem was I did not have seven black buttons that matched each other. I wanted black. I didn't have seven black. Then I thought white didn't have seven white, except for those little cheap plastic flat ones. Those don't count. So I found these little kind of sparkly glass ones. They're not glass, they're plastic, but they're shiny and you can see through them. So decided, Terry said she liked red, so I did red. And then this morning I found these really, really baggy <laughs> pants in my closet. Goodness! So I think my next project, all of these have pockets. And when you have pockets, it's really hard to take your pants in. I don't know, I guess I'll just leave them like they are. But my goodness, why are they so baggy? <laughs> oh my goodness. And the nice thing about baggy clothes is it makes you feel thinner, so that's kind of nice. So no waist darts. Do bust darts and waist darts in the back. And sleeveless. And it's sure fit designs. So that's what I made. The painters just texted me and told me they're not coming Monday, they're coming Tuesday. So that kind of slowed down my jets quite a bit. And I'm glad. Mondays are never good. You know, Mondays are after the weekend and you're not really wound back up, you know. You, you have to have your, your knob in the back turned, you know, to get you started for the week. And that takes half a day Monday for me. <laughs> So I'm glad they're coming Tuesday. I want to tell you one more story before I end this. People are saying, where are you? You haven't made a video. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to know somebody out there misses me when I'm gone for a while. I just haven't had anything to say. <laughs> this, uh, it's so messed up in here. It's so ghost towny and so empty. It's just... And my other room is so full of everything because I had to move a bunch of stuff from here into there. So I just feel like everything looks bad right now. I guess that's my main problem. But I have my tree over here. <laughs> I have to move my tree out of here too. 
So I wanted to tell you my Amazon story. And then I'll end this and put it up so you'll know I'm still alive and I'm fine, basically, as fine as I've ever been. Uh, yes, I ordered some new lights. You know, I'm always complaining about my lights. I bought these two lights, two, actually I bought four, two for up here and two for downstairs. And it may be I just don't know what I'm doing. That's probably what it mainly is. So I bought a different kind of lights. I'll... I'll take a picture. I'll take a picture. And you can see the setup. I'll take a picture. I'll put it right here. So the one in the middle has a whole bunch of little bitty lights. It has a row of white, a row of yellow, row of white, row of yellow. And I have no idea what to do with the yellow light, so I just leave them off all the time. But every time I used them, I can see fine in the little viewfinder now, and it looks like there's lots of light. And when I just had that kind, it looked like there was lots of light. But then I would put it up to edit it, and it would be dark, super dark. And so I would have to add light from my software to every video I made. So I decided I never did want this other kind of light. Now, the one in the middle uh, with the flaps, I don't know what it's called. But the other two, I used to call them umbrella lights. But there are kinds that have like this big umbrella behind them. And then there's this kind that's in the picture, the two big rectangles. Those are called soft boxes. Okay. And I noticed that my friend Becky at Power Tools with Thread was using this kind of light. So I texted her and I said, where'd you get those lights? What are they? In fact, she's the one I got the first set from because I thought she was using those. I thought I saw her using them. So she told me, get them on Amazon. Here they are. All brands use them. I use them. I love them. So I ordered what the description said. Now this is the Amazon description. Two soft boxes, two tripod things to hold them up, and ten bulbs. That's what it says. You can go there and you can look and you'll see. It says ten bulbs. Each one of these soft boxes inside has a big plastic ring and it holds five bulbs. It has five sockets in it for five bulbs. 5 plus 5 is 10. There were 8 bulbs in the box. 8 boxes. There's not room for a flea's tail to be added to the box. If they really did put 10 lights in there. There's not room for 10. There's only room for 8. So I called Amazon. Hello, my order's all screwed up. It's supposed to have 10 lights. It only has 8 lights. Why doesn't it have in it what it says it has in it? And it's so terribly important for my YouTube channel. <laughs> So Amazon says, we'll pick up the first box. You won't have to pay any postage. We will send you another box with 10 lights. I say, okay. <laughs> and then, of course, they had told me to contact Fovitech. So I contacted Fovitech via email. And I called their phone number. Nobody answered their phone number. So I emailed them. Because at that point, I had another box coming, right? And I had the first box with eight lights. So I thought, well, fine, I might as well contact Fovitech and tell them their description's wrong and there's only eight lights instead of ten. So Fovitech emails me back and they say, too bad, so sad, contact Amazon. So I email them back and I say, I already contacted Amazon. They told me to contact you. So then I get the second box from Amazon. So I have the first box still. I get the second box from Amazon. I open it up. Guess how many lights are in it? Raise your hand if you know. Oh, you all know. Everybody knows. There was only eight lights. Because that's all that come with it. <laughs> eight lights. That's it. So now I have two boxes, four soft boxes, and now I'm short four lights. Right? I'm short four lights. So I call Amazon again. I say, I called Fovitech, they told me to contact you. I said, you sent me another box, you promised me it's going to have ten lights, it only has eight lights. Now I have two boxes that only have eight lights, so now I'm missing four lights. 
So he says, we will refund you for the lights that we sent you. And we will send you a new set with 10 bulbs free of charge. So they only gave me my money back for, for the set that they sent again. So I decided to keep them both. So they send me a third set free of charge. So now we've got six, six lights. So the next one comes, guess how many light bulbs it has? Eight. It only has eight. They're always going to have eight. That's all that's in the box. I contacted Amazon. I said, this is wrong. They're all the same. You need to fix the description. You need to change it. Something is wrong. A couple days later, I get an email from Fovitech. Fovitech makes the lights. I get an email from them saying, Amazon contacted us. We're terribly sorry for what you've been put through. We will send you another set of lights. So several days later, I get my package from Fovitech. It doesn't have any soft boxes and it's not a whole set. It's only two light bulbs. Well, I'm short four light bulbs, right? And when the third box comes from Amazon, then I'm short six bulbs. Isn't it just nuts? It's just nuts, just crazy nuts. So I have paid, the final outcome is this. With the three boxes, I've got six lights. I'm gonna use three downstairs and three upstairs. But I will contact Fovitech again and say, Amazon has sent me two more boxes. Both those boxes are missing lights and see if I can get Fovitech to send me the four lights that they owe me because they sent me two, remember? Is that a long, crazy story? It is, but I just wanted to say, Amazon was very nice. And I ended up paying for one set, and I have three sets. And they're like $132. So I just wanted to say thank you, Amazon. I know some people hate Amazon. Some people love Amazon. Amazon is my local store here. <laughs> Something comes every day from Amazon. My vitamins come from Amazon. My makeup comes from Amazon. So many things. And of course, Jerry orders tools and nuts and bolts and all kinds of crazy things. Long story short, I have six new lights. So I hope you can see me. <laughs> Just like the picture, I've got one, two, three hitting me right now. I'm gonna let you go. I'm gonna finish. This room still has a few of a little waste basket and my little knee exerciser machine and a few, few things I need to get out of here. So, I'm going to go ahead and finish doing that. Jerry, of course, is still one arm only. And he sees his doctor again week after next. And then he can not wear that sling anymore. And the painters called and said they're not coming until next Tuesday instead of Monday. So, that gives me a little more time to get ready for painters to show up, which is fine with me. Oh, I have a tip. I have a really good tip. <laughs> for my quilting friends. If you're a quilter and you've been a quilter for a long time, you've got a bunch of quilts. And so I keep my quilts on top of my bookshelves. They're bookshelves from Ikea. And it's not really bookshelves, it's cubby holes, squares. And there's one, two, three, four, five by five. So there's 25 cubby holes. And that's where I keep all of my fabric that I wrap on those core boards, my, my bolts. And up on the top, it's just a great big flat place and I fold my quilts and put them up there. Well, I had to get them out of this room for the painters. And this bedroom's already full. You saw the bed, it's stacked to the ceiling. And I've already put a whole bunch of other stuff in there. It's full. And I didn't want to put my quilts on the floor and I didn't want to put them in my sewing room and cover up my table. I have to have that table. And I didn't want to haul them downstairs. They're very heavy. Guess what I thought of my lightning fast mind. <gasps> I should make it a giveaway. Oh, I should. First one to tell me where I found a place to put that big stack of quilts. You gotta be first. First one to tell me where I put them, I'll send you a surprise. How about that? That'll be fun. <laughs> I wish I could do that every single time. I tell you, if I had a post office across the street, I would. Okay, so first one who can figure out where I put the great big Great big stack of folded quilts. I will send you a surprise, depending on whether you're a quilter or a seamstress or a jewelry maker or whatever you are in the world, okay? <laughs> Bye.
bye for now, everybody. <laughs>